Oh, well, thanks, Will, and uh, good morning, everybody. This is Don Stewart from beautiful downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, United States. So I'm happy to to join you th this this morning and uh, walk through some of the findings that we we uncovered through our Beyond the Fish report. So let me get started here. Perfect. So. Um, just a quick commercial about, about Wombat and who we are. Uh, we're a leader in the security awareness and training space. Our mission is to change user behavior. And the behavior that we really focus on is that of the non-technical employee and their ability to understand, recognize, and most importantly, appropriately react to cybersecurity situations. Uh, we do this by building software solutions that our customers use to teach their end users to recognize and avoid these attacks. The solution assesses end user behavior, educates them, and gathers intelligence about how they interact with the training so that security officers can continue to strengthen their end user weaknesses and reduce the risks overall. Our founders are, are from Carnegie Mellon University. They've been educating adults their entire career. Uh, the company was a spin out of uh, Carnegie Mellon U University back in 2008, and all of our solutions today utilize this original research and approach at its core. So with that said, let me just jump right into Beyond the Fish. So um, what we're going to be talking about today is our second annual Beyond the Fish report, where we examine over 70 million questions asked and answered by our customers and their end users from 10 different categories. Now these questions were gathered through their use of our cyber strength knowledge assessment tool and the interactive training modules that we offer. And although we'll highlight strengths and weaknesses tied directly to the fish, fishing, uh, we'll also go beyond the fish to analyze knowledge of other business cr critical best practices, including data protection measures, mobile device security, safe social sharing, uh, password hygiene, and the like. In addition, we also will highlight some information that we've gathered from our 2017 user risk report, which compiles the results from an international third party survey of 2,000 adults, 1,000 in the US and 1,000 in the UK, and reveal common cybersecurity behaviors in areas similar to those that we assessed with the Beyond the Fish data. So basically, everybody wants to ask a question, so how are end users doing? Well, uh, we took a look at over 70 million questions asked and answered across these 10 categories from June uh, 2016 through May 2017. Uh, and we're able to show that uh, in, from our last year's report, the 2016 report, we saw about, about a 10% reduction in the number of uh, incorrectly answered questions. So it went down from 22% in 2016 down to 20% in 2017, and that 10% uh, that that 10 percent reduction might not mean, look like a lot, but remember, 70 million questions were asked, so that means that 7 million questions are now answered correctly. And from today's presentation, I hope that many of you will start to think about how your organizations and how your employees would fare in some of these topics. Now, before we go too deep into the report, I wanted to mention one thing that, that's clear from our data. Uh, most people when, come to us asking about helping them solve their phishing problems, and, they, and they're very, very focused on doing anti-phishing type training, because that's still the number one uh, attack vehicle that criminals are using. But so often, when people try to solve what is perceived to be the core problem, they often overlook the real underlying root causes of what the issues might be. And I propose, based upon this research, that the same is true here in cyber, with cyber attacks. Uh, in, in taking a look at the results, I came to the conclusion that successful phishing attacks are often the direct result of non-phishing related behavior. That is often the, the result of employees not understanding or paying attention to other security practices or behaviors that open the door for attackers to successfully breach an organization. Our data support, supports this. Oops. Our data su supports this fact, and we need to look beyond the fish for the root causes of phishing attacks and work to address those directly in an effort to reduce the number of successful attacks that breach our organizations. And we found that many of the unsafe behaviors, such as the ones shown on the screen, here lead to those successful attacks. So 
um, lapses in being able to protect confidential information, uh, the sharing of login credentials to secure systems, if in the wrong hands, as you know, could be catastrophic. Protecting and disposing of data securely, simply throwing away documents that contain sensitive information versus shredding them, could allow a criminal to do to what we quote as dumpster dive, or to grab that uh, that garbage and filter through some of the information that can be used in more targeted campaigns in the future. Oversharing data on social media sites has obviously been able to be used by criminals to trick over-trusting employees or over-entrusting individuals to fall for scams that they normally wouldn't fall for. And protecting mobile device information also very, very critical in uh, providing criminals with raw data that they then can use to, for more sophisticated uh, attacks. Now imagine if you would, if you and our, your end users didn't give cyber attackers all the information they need for successful attacks, how easy all of our jobs would be. So let's dig into the research and show you a little bit more about what the data has uncovered regarding the strength and weaknesses of some of the knowledge that our employees have. Uh, but first, one of the big questions we get constantly when, when talking to, to customers or prospects is, I want to find out how my organization or how I compare to others in my industry. And the research shows that when you look at industries and the average number of questions that are answered incorrectly across various topics, the difference between industries really isn't that much. Uh, now, we know that industries consider themselves unique and, and, and very different, uh, but this data really points to the fact that when it comes to cyber knowledge or cybersecurity behavior understandings, that the employees are very similar in their understanding across these topics. It's a bit alarming if you take a look at this chart that some of the worst performing industries are those that we would expect to be handling our most sensitive data. Healthcare stands out as one of those organizations or one of those industries where their employees just are, are demonstrating um, a lack of cybersecurity knowledge, which with having them handling all of our medical records and the like uh, is a bit alarming. Another that, that jumps out to me is the defense industry base. So those organizations that have our country's most top secret uh, military and defense data, uh, it, their employees are, are lacking when it comes to certain areas of, of cybersecurity knowledge. And the professional services industries, the law firms and the accounting firms and other professional services firms, insurance companies, banks, where they're supposed to be capturing and holding and, and managing all of our sensitive data, um, their, their lack of understanding is a bit alarming as well. However, not everything is a doom and gloom because through more proactive awareness regarding cybersecurity uh, initiatives and how criminals are using some of this other data to create phishing attacks, um, we're seeing our customers more and more become better and better when it comes to their employees' understanding of some of these various topics. So how are, data's, how are end users doing? Now remember, and I'll say this uh, a number of times through our presentation, that the percentages you're looking at here are that of the average, their average percentages of questions answered incorrectly. Uh, so if you take a look at these topics, the um, question you want to ask yourself is, if I went back to my organization and gave a quiz or an assessment out to my, my employees, how well would they understand the topics of uh, protecting confidential information, disposing data properly, using safe social networking, etc. So we'll start off with protecting confidential information. And this was one of our worst performing topics uh, across. And we wanted to compare uh, last year's uh, results with this year's results. And we saw a 1% reduction, which is good. Uh, however, it's, it's not significant, but again, with seven million questions uh, answered, asked and answered, um, the improve this modest improvement is important. Now, one of the questions users struggle with most often has to do with shared credentials, and it should be reinforced that 
even though some people, someone in the organization is a colleague and a trusted colleague and you work together for many, many years, really doesn't mean that they should or are allowed to get access to, to the data. So uh, that's, that's being uncovered through the sharing of those credentials. So employees are still a little uh, sketchy on why this is such an important um, security risk. Now, if we take a look at these industries, the, the industries perform worse, the average, um, one more time, these industries performed worse than the average 26% of the questions as, asked incorrectly. Now, before you say that, that, this, that this type of information isn't relevant to our, our organization, PCI, credit card handling type of data, as well as healthcare type of, of data, uh, let me think about, are there people in your organization that do handle this information? So people on your e-commerce teams, or if you're in retail, or if uh, in other direct consumer or payment processing uh, roles, they may not be dealing with credit card data uh, on a daily basis. However, that collecting and handling credit card data is, is still extremely important. And those in the HR role um, may be handling more uh, insur health insurance type data or other health record type data. Again, having those employees understand what is sensitive data, what is privacy, what offers PII vulnerabilities uh, is important. And what we see is that many of our customers will um, make sure that they group those employees who need access and training on this type of data uh, to go through some of the online trainings and specifically uh, focus in that group on making sure that they understand uh, the relevance and the security risks associated with this type of data. Protecting data, uh, protecting and disposing of data security, this category showed uh, a significant improvement year over year. So it went from 30% of the questions answered incorrectly in 2016 uh, down to 25% this year. And the topics addressed in this category include destruction of electronic and paper documents, use of USB uh, devices, the classification of sensitive data, and includes other concepts regarding life cycle of data from creation to disposal, as well as techniques for handling personal identifiable information, PII in general. And users across all industries still incorrectly answered 25% uh, of the questions in these categories. And with GDPR uh, looming over not only Europe, but anybody that deals with any European citizens, uh, over the next few months, training on this topic is going to be coming, is becoming more and more important. And looking at these industries, who did worse than the average, it seems uh, many of the high level, many of the industries that did worse um, are those industries where we see quite a bit of turnover. So consumer goods, retail, uh, hospitality, entertainment. Um, so some of the things that we gathered from this is that uh, there may be some hidden need to make sure that you even take your part-time employees uh, or your seasonal employees and put them through some level of uh, security awareness training specifically around protecting and disposing of data. The next topic that we covered um, is very important, as you might imagine, which is identifying uh, phishing threats. And last year, it, we were at 28% questions answered incorrectly, and it dropped significantly down uh, by 4% to 24%. Now, this isn't surprising because identifying uh, phishing threats threats has been uh, a very popular amongst our customers uh, with all the news releases and, uh, and PR activity uh, and breach notifications that we see on the news. Uh, companies and organizations are very much attuned to trying to make sure that their employees understand how to recognize and thwart off uh, phishing attacks. However, related to phishing, uh, we recommend that, that you that your people should measure your people on two, two ways. One is through the use of knowledge assessments, and the other is through simulated attacks. One shows knowledge of a concept, and the other indicates vulnerability to the attack. 
Uh, these cl this click rate data is from our 2017 uh, State of the Fish report. And as you can see here, uh, there can be significant differences in the results between simulated attack results and knowledge assessments. So for healthcare, uh, although their click rate was on simulated attacks was 18%, their understanding of the concepts was answered incorrectly 26% of the time. So those quick click rates could be misleading because you have people that might uh, just delete it, delete a mock phishing attack, they may report it properly, uh, they may never open it. Uh, but when it comes to understanding the concepts, you want to make sure that you have the highest level of understanding of the concepts so that when the, when the opportunity presents itself, when they see that email, whether it's in their work environment or in their personal life, they understand how to look at that email with a keen eye to be able to take the right and the most appropriate action. And there could be reasons behind why people didn't fall for phishing attacks, as I mentioned. Uh, perhaps they didn't see it in their inbox. Uh, the information wasn't relative, relevant to them. Uh, so relying on that data alone is, could be misleading. We believe looking at both knowledge assessment information as well as the simulated attack assessments uh, gives you a, a fuller view of the need for continued education uh, to ensure people understand and can apply those topics when the time is right. Protecting mobile device information uh, also saw a uh, we saw a significant decline. Now that's not a decline. Well, that, those notes are wrong. We saw a signif fairly significant increase in the amount of questions that were uh, answered incorrectly, from 15% in 2016 uh, up to 24% in 2017. Now, before we get to the results, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some, the Pew Research and why this information or this topic is extremely important. Uh, in a recent Pew Research project, the numbers show that, that we are rapidly approaching 100% smartphone adoption rate with adults from the age of 18 to 49. And these devices are becoming more and more complex, more and more interconnected, and as evidenced by our 2017 risk report, users frequently blur the line between corporate and personal computing. And in an age where we're doing a lot of bring your own device and integrating that with our corporate communication infrastructure, um, the lack of knowledge and awareness for, among mobile device users could significantly negatively impact the security of our business data and other systems. So for, in this category, we had questions related to unsafe mobile applications and invasive permissions saw the significant downgrade in the performance year over year. With the obvious increases in, in, in growing use of mobile devices or organizations, as I mentioned before, allowing uh, bring your own device access, accessing internal systems and email, the area in the company really needs to be included uh, in areas that are covered by uh, overall security and, and awareness strategies. In the industry survey conducted in 2016, just 52% of organizations said that they evaluate their end users' knowledge on this topic. So perhaps the poor performance of the results this year uh, is more proof that there's a diversity in our training beyond just recognizing phishing attacks and the use of corporate assets. Using social media safely, uh, this category was one of our worst performing in 2016. Oops, I'm sorry. However, we see great strides taking place year over year. So in this category, which saw, again saw the largest increase in improvement, a positive trend given the continued increase of the use of social media platforms around the globe. With that said, we often see organizations classifying social media as, quote, outside activity uh, for their employees. Uh, however, you know, consider how many of us, when we are looking for new employees, the first place that we go is we look them up on LinkedIn or Facebook or their Twitter feeds 
or other more regional social media sites to see what they're posting and what kind of person they are in their social life. Well, criminals do the exact same thing. They can identify either employees of an organization or they can identify uh, and specifically target executives of an organization and monitor and stalk their social media postings and then use that data later for a more targeted, a more meaningful, and most importantly, a more believable uh, phishing attack, which is voicemail type phishing, uh, or phishing attack. And this way, they, they, through their gaining of insight and knowledge regarding somebody's preferences, their friends, their likes, their dislikes, their travel habits, they're able to make those attacks much more believable. Now, from, a, from an industry standpoint, um, it, it looks like, again, some of those industries uh, that are doing worse than, than our average here uh, are a bit alarming. So the telecommunication uh, industry, the defense industry, which uh, I thought was extremely surprising that many of the departments of or organizations that are, are, are chartered with the defense or the suppliers of those uh, of the defense industry would not train their employees better on how to monitor, manage, and do safe social networking. Now, from our 2017 user risk report, this revealed the following points of concern with regards to social media best practices among U.S. survey participants. So 71% regularly use their corporate device outside the office. 54% view or post social media on those devices, and 43% allow friends or family members to view or post social media on those devices. So even though you're locking your, your corporate systems down for the employee, once the employee logs onto them or takes them home, you lose somewhat of that control, and if they're allowing others to use their computer or their device, again, it just opens up their your organization to, to security threats. And again, this might be just because they believe or have a false sense of security that uh, that corporate IT department and security teams are taking care of me. They're not going to allow my corporate device to be compromised in any way. And due to the fact of that misunderstanding or lack of knowledge, they do open the door for, for, for possible vulnerabilities. Now, not everything is so doom and gloom. Uh, we saw positive scores in many areas. So these are the areas where we saw questions that were answered correctly. So although these positive scores don't give, shouldn't give us a pass on keeping these topics, again, top of mind, not only in our cybersecurity training strategies, but making sure that our employees are reminded of it all the time, it does lend itself to know that um, employees are understanding that when they're in certain instances when they leave the office they need to be better mindful of their activity or use of devices so working outside the office we saw 80 percent of the questions answered in this case correctly safe use of internet access 81 percent protecting physical devices or protecting against physical risks that is 82 percent protecting yourself against scam and I attribute a lot of that to the media and the heightened level of uh, of coverage around people who do fall for scams. People are a bit more aware on how to protect themselves and building safe passwords. Now this was a bit of a surprise because last year's report we had a 90, I think it was a 90 or 92 percent correct response rates. So I'm not saying this means that we're getting lax in our training or scrutiny regarding safe passwords, it does lend itself to the notion that even though we do well one year, we got to continue to, to reinforce those, those topics to our employees year after year. Now, it's not enough to, it's not enough just to train your employees there are methodologies that are out there that will help make those training efforts uh, even more impactful. Now, our company has landed on learning science principles, which is a decade-old um, methodology or science on how to teach adults certain topics. And during an upcoming uh, presentation or demonstration of our product, we're happy to go through that in level of detail. 
So I'm going to pause here before we get to um, get outside the the scope of the the survey and ask Matt. Matt, are there any questions that uh, you want to take right now? Uh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. We may we may start with a few. So just quickly, just a reminder: if you do have any questions, you can um, ask them in the question pane on the right. But I did want to start, John. So we have. Um, so the first question I've got here is, how often do you recommend that organizations run knowledge assessments? Well, it really depends on what you've done up to this point. Um, and it depends also what areas you're looking to focus on. Um, knowledge assessments we see as, again, an ongoing process within, within our methodology. So at the very beginning of an employee's em uh, em em uh, employment, rather, or at the start of a campaign, you may want to do a fairly lengthy uh, assessment of their overall knowledge so that you can customize or personalize the type of training you provide them. And then throughout the year, uh, as part of an overall, again, awareness campaign, uh, we suggest that you do short, intimate quizzes regarding various topics. We see many companies um, pick a month, let's say it's February for their remote employees and they may do a short quiz regarding topics outside for security beyond the office or travel security not to test them to provide them with additional training but really to test them and to use it as part of an overall awareness campaign to keep those topics top of mind with the with the employees okay yeah cool um, so I've got another question here from a client it is, what do you recommend if we have been running phishing campaigns but cannot get our click rate below 20%? Well, that, lent, that goes back to the slide that we saw earlier, the result, which is that you really do need to do two things. You not only need to do mock attacks, but you also need to help your employees understand how to analyze or the fundamentals of looking at an email. So that leads it over to training. You really do need to train your employees on the fundamentals of when I see an email, what to look for, how to react to it. Uh, phishing uh, mock attacks only, I, I equate to trying to teach your employees to swim by dunking their head in the water. Right. So if you have employees who are not doing well in their mock attacks, you, you provide them with some type of at point of failure um, piece, piece of information to help them learn what to do in the future. But it's almost like trying to take them and dunk their head in the water 15 or 20 times. When you throw them in the middle of the pool and you ask them to swim, they drown because you haven't taught them the fundamentals of swimming. Same thing here. Spend some time training your employees on how to look at emails, how to look at embedded URLs, and what to do if they believe an email is suspicious. And that, that will get your employees, get those click rates down to below 20%. Yeah, definitely good advice. So if we, if we even take it one step back, like what would you recommend if um, an organization doesn't have a security education program? Like how would you recommend they sort of start? Well, many of our, many of our customers that come to us in the beginning have a specific goal in mind. They want to read, they've experienced a phishing breach. They've, ex they uh, are aware of certain activities that are taking place. The best thing to do would be to, uh, do a quick assessment of your employees, get an understanding of what they know and what they don't know. Uh, and then once you have that assessment, you're then able to lay out a plan um, on what types of topics you want to cover. But most importantly is to take a long-term view at security and awareness training. Doing it once a year, doing it even twice a year doesn't get the end result that you want, which is how do I help my employees behave differently? And if that's your goal, then you want to be able not only to train them, but also to provide them with reinforcement of that training throughout the year to help condition them to do different things, to change that behavior when the, when the situation arises. And based upon learning science principles, that's the type of focus that we have exclusively. Our exclusive focus is you want to change that behavior because if you're not changing behavior, you're throwing, you're throwing training dollars down the toilet. So the best place to start short term is take a long term view at how you how you move the needle on their understanding of these various topics, and then put a put a put a program in place that does that on an ongoing basis. 
Yeah, thanks, Tom. Um, so we're a little bit over time, but I, we've still got quite a few people on, so I think we may as well continue continue your presentation. If anyone has questions from now until the end, they can just add them to the question pane, and then we'll we'll finish them off. Um, yeah, when you're complete. Okay, I've only got a few more uh, slides left. I we originally started talking about. Uh, our approach to, to training and awareness, again, is, is based upon learning science principles where uh, we look not only to uh, present the topic or concept to the employee, but we do it in a way that, that understands how do adults learn. Not only how do they learn, but how do they learn uh, and then convert that learning into behavior. So we present the material in bite-sized chunks, easily read, easily understood. It's presented in more story-based environment or conversational language. We use a lot of gaming or simulation as our testing vehicle to make sure that not only the employees are engaged and they find it kind of fun, but they're also able to then understand very quickly, how do I take that training and apply it to my daily life in real-world situations? And the other important piece here is constant and continuous feedback. So whether we're training them or we're testing them through gaming or assessing their knowledge, we're taking advantage of each and every one of those learning experiences by constantly providing ongoing feedback uh, to the employee, whether their answer is right or whether their answer is wrong. And on the back end, we're collecting all of that data so that you're able to understand, even though somebody may have completed a training assessment or training assignment, how many times did they have to go back and answer the questions before they understood the topic? What kind of involvement have they had in some of these mock phishing attacks? Did they click on it more than once? What did they do? How well did they do? And that lends itself to our methodology, which is a continuous uh, training methodology, which again starts off with assessing what your employees know and what they don't know, educating them, educating them through a series of online training modules as well as what we call teachable moments at the point of failure. We present them with some information so they can learn from their mistake. The reinforcement side is done through a series of ongoing campaigns with the phishing tool. We recommend hitting your employees anywhere between once every three to six weeks with a mock phishing attack. Uh, with the goal, again, condition them to be able to look at each and every email with a keen eye so that they know what to do and how to react if they see one that might be a bit suspicious. And the other key point there is not is to provide them with a very easy, simple, safe, and standard way of reporting any suspicious email that you see. And do it in a way that positively rewards employees for reporting suspicious emails. And by doing that, it takes the burden off the employee to one, think about reporting anything suspicious because it's a maybe just a push of a button. They don't delete it and by reporting it to the security team, the security team not only um, is able to determine whether the whether the email was originally was a fish or not or was part of a training assignment, but it helps security more quickly identify real attacks that are taking place so they can take immediate action to remediate the existing attack but also to uh, inoculate the organization from any future attacks that are, that are underway. We also do that reinforcement through a series of online uh, material, images, posters, tchotchkes, articles, again to remind them and help you build that culture of security and that security is everybody's responsibility. And then on the back end we're constantly capturing and collecting all the information associated with all those interactions. Now, one of the case studies that we've highlighted is that from, of an uh, employee benefits organization. Uh, and this team used one of our, what we call, automatic enrollments. That is, if somebody fails a phishing attack, not only do you present at a point of failure um, teachable moment, but you can also choose to automatically enroll them into more detailed training. So that those people who obviously need the more detailed training can take it when they can focus on it. And by doing that, they've been able, they were able to decrease their, their click-through rates by 89%, which is great. So in, in conclusion, as you can see from the results of, that we've presented, end users need more knowledgeable, it need to be more knowledgeable on a variety of different topics. Those topics are, are outlined here. The other thing that I think that pops out from the, the results is that 
Although phishing, again, is the number one uh, threat vehicle being used by cyber attackers today, it's not the root cause of the problem. The root cause of the problem is our employees understanding all those non-phishing related behaviors and how those feed criminals that then can be used to do more targeted, more believable, more impactful phishing attacks. So logic would dictate if we're able to help our employees understand how they're involved in the security chain, how their behavior and knowledge can help reduce the amount of attacks that are successfully able to breach our organizations, the better our organizations are prepared and the fewer uh, successful attacks they would be. And again, I would ask each and everybody on the phone to think about how would your end users how would your end user's knowledge compare to the areas that we covered today? So with that, I'm, I'll end up with uh, a call to action here. So if you'd like to uh, receive uh, a copy of this report uh, to, to look through and, and analyze the data on your own, uh, please feel free. Now, Matt will, uh, will add that link to the chat line so everybody will have an electronic version uh, of this yep. link. Click on that link, you'll be taken to the content security webpage where you can download that form. Uh, in addition, if you want to talk with anybody at content security regarding um, how they're using it internally or to uh, schedule a time to talk in more detail about how your organization uh, might be able to address some of these issues we discussed today, please feel free to reach out to, to anybody in the content security team. So yep, that's it, that I'll put it back over done. to you. Yeah, we've just got one question. Um, okay. So the question is, we are using the learning management system LearnUpon. Do you have integration with that platform? Um, uh, great question. We get that quite a bit when we talk about our training modules. If that, tr if that uh, learning platform is SCORM compliant, that's S-C-O-R-M. Uh, yep, compliant. actually it is. It says it in that question. <laughs> Sorry. Perfect. So if it's a SCORM compliant learning management system, then our training modules absolutely can be imported into that learning management system and you can deploy it there. Okay, I hope that answered your question. Um, so yeah, as Don said, I've also put a link into the chat bar where you can go to our landing page to download the full version of the Beyond the Fish report. Um, and I'll also be sending a follow-up email with a recording of this webinar as well as um, a PDF version of Don's slides. Um, so yeah, if there's no more questions, thank you to Don, and thank you to everyone for attending today's webinar. Um, thank you, Don, and the, the team. Yeah, we do appreciate um, you know um, the time difference as well. Uh, it's our pleasure, everybody. Again, thank you very much for attending, and uh, I hope to talk to you soon.